Hi, this is Paul, and I wanted to do a little um, video log about some of the reading about Peterson this weekend. There was quite a bit of it that was around. There was an interesting article in the New York Post, and all of this, all of these links are on my blog. There's an interesting article in the New York Post about a male backlash against the Me Too movement, and this got picked up by my Google, um, my Google bot looking for Jordan Peterson references. And and what was really interesting was that this is this is what he said: Jordan Peterson, the University of Toronto professor and author of the best-selling Twelve Rules for Life and Antidote for Chaos, who has become a YouTube sensation by rebutting crazy left-wing students, has been lambasted on social media for citing sociological studies that say women are more agreeable in the workplace and suffer from salary repercussions because of it. Although this is essentially a restatement of the thinking behind lean in, if you want it, push for it. And I thought that was a, a really interesting observation on the point of on the part of the author that here here you, you have in a sense Peterson who's getting shellacked from the left about, you know, so you're so you're against women, so you're against gender equality or on and on and on. He's making essentially the point of this this own this one woman who has kind of become an icon in in certain feminist circles for the very popular book that she wrote and, and Peterson's making essentially the same point but it's not seen as the same point because it's shown in a different light that this gets into my the second article that I thought was really interesting a couple of people sent this to me uh, something from a Washington Beacon I've never read anything from this blog before it's written by a Micah Meadowcroft and and right away in the first sentence i thought oh boy look at this jordan peterson is fast emerging as something like the c.s lewis of our time i thought oh wow this guy's barking up my tree um what this and i thought this was one of the um one of the most learned critiques of peterson that i've read in print now again it's important to recognize that the stuff the stuff that's in print print is a different world than youtube and and so in a sense, Jordan Peterson, now that he has written and written a book, that the Jordan Peterson author is a little different from the Jordan Peterson YouTube person, who's a little bit different from the Jordan Peterson human being in flesh and blood. And and so we're processing all of these Jordan Petersons right now. And and this is a this is a Christian author who's from Hillsdale College. I did a little bit of research on the author. Hillsdale is in Michigan and one of the few things I know about it is that they actually have a, um, a a number of people who do a fair amount on C.S. Lewis. So I'm not surprised that Lewis came up in that conversation with Peterson. Now he's it's a it's a semi-critical review of Peterson's book. Um, part of the part of the difficulty, if you're a tribalist, is that it's very hard to cross the tribes. For example, if you watch last night's football game and you're a Patriots fan, you might not be feeling a lot of warmth towards the Eagles. And if you're an Eagles fan, you're feeling a lot of triumph. And so you will, in, the, in a sense, that game is two different games. And you view how the refs call different things. You view how, I mean, those some of those touchdowns are going to be debated for a long time in that game. And, and so this is the thing about tribes. And, and so many Christians, when they see Peterson, they'll look at him, and this appears in my comments all the time, they'll look at Peter and say, well, he's not a Christian. Okay, so, well, is he a Christian? Isn't he a Christian? I've talked about that in previous videos. His, his answers about, there are, uh, about that are ambiguous. And the reason they're ambiguous is because of, if you dig down into him, you can... You can see why they're ambiguous, um, because of what he believes and how he believes it. Well, that depends on what you mean by belief. That depends on what you mean by Christian. That depends on what you think of reality, and so on and so forth. And and so this and so when we approach Peterson from our tribe, we look at him and we evaluate him by the measure of our tribe. Now that's absolutely legitimate. We all do this. We can't help but do this. These are the biases that we have. But at some point, if we want to have a broader conversation out there in the public world with people outside of our tribe, we need to try to find new methods of communicating and, and of measuring. And this gets into this long process that I talked about after the after the Reformation Wars and the Enlightenment and, and the striving to find common language with which we can communicate and have meaningful conversations with each other. And to put this into Peterson's realm, in, in a sense, what we're trying to do is, is act as logos in the chaos of this enormously complex world. And so we, we find these little, in a sense, bilingual logos 
encounters to try to have communication one with another. And so this was, I thought, a very insightful review. It was very worth reading. I think some Jordan Peterson fans will be upset by it. I think some Christians will feel uh, vindicated by it. I, I don't think it was a wholly negative critique, and but I thought the, the critique brought um, a decent amount of light with it and was, and was worthwhile reading. Uh, this morning in... Um, New York Mag. This is this is another good piece that that was put up this weekend. And New York Mag is is you know to the left side of the American political ops, uh, the American political conversation. And the the picture I thought was quite interesting. But but I thought the the author of this piece also did quite a good job in terms of getting at Peterson and and what he believes and and treating him fairly. And so um, it was. It was a. It was a good piece, and it was. It's probably worth your reading. Um, I came across a, a YouTube tyrannical lobster empire, and I'm just. I'm, I'm just amazed at the creativity of people out there, and and I think it also speaks of why which, which things we pick up on and which things we pick up on, in the events that grab attention, such as the Kathy Newman interview. And it's, you know, it's interesting to take a step back and say, okay, why this interview? Why those words? Why this remix of him? It's, to me, this, this kind of thing is just endlessly fascinating. Um, Psychology Today also had a, a piece on Peterson from a guy who works on anti-bullying. I thought this was an interesting article, and again, sometimes the presence of where you can find an article like this is as interesting as the article itself. And then PewDiePie, I picked this up in a picked this up in another in another place. PewDiePie did a review of Peterson's book, and he did a review of a number of other classics that that he um, that he had read for the first time. Apparently, he he really liked Brave New World, uh, didn't like um, Fahrenheit. Um, What's the darn number? Uh, Fahrenheit 486, uh, 451. I don't remember. Um, which, which personally, I love that book. That was a tremendous. That was a terrific book. I thought, but very interesting. Then listening to PewDiePie kind of go through the book. His his review of it was fairly positive, and it's interesting that he gets to the end and discovers, oh, so he didn't. He's a religious. He's he's religious, and that was that was fascinating to me. How how PewDiePie. Um, the, just just the filter and the bias that that we tend to have in just flowing around in us. At first, he didn't notice it was a self help book, which he might not have read it as he said initially. If it was, if he had known it was a self help book, and then he's religious, and so he's like, oh, oh, he's he's one of these religious people. So, uh, well, maybe I kind of didn't wish I'd read it, but but I they did make good points, and I did kind of enjoy it. And so, it was very very interesting listening to his review. I've never watched a PewDiePie video. I've you know heard his name and seen things about him, but. He's, he's just not my cup of tea. So fascinating, fascinating stuff on the internet this weekend. And yeah, I just want to do a little vlog and I'll put the links in the notes and that's it for now.